Hello and welcome to the channel. The February 25th presidential election could change the course of history in Nigeria and do what has never been done before, removing a sitting president from power. That is the hope and faith that both presidential candidates of the PDP and LP, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi respectively, still have. Despite what many analysts are predicting to be a tough one for the opposition in respect of their cases against the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, no matter how strong they may be, you just can never say never. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. Constitutional Interpretation Nigeria's democracy is on tenterhooks. In just over three weeks, on May 29, Bola Tinubu will be inaugurated as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yet, in parallel, election petitions seeking to nullify his declaration as winner of this year's presidential poll are earnestly afoot. Given that the petitions won't be determined before May 29, a sword of Damocles in the form of his removal from power potentially hangs over Tinubu's head. Theoretically, that's a possibility. Otherwise, what's the point of the presidential election petitions? The 1999 Constitution under Section 239-1 allows the Court of Appeal and ultimately the Supreme Court to determine whether someone has been validly elected as president. The Electoral Act 2022 under Section 136 1 requires the court to nullify the election of someone not duly elected as president. Thus, constitutionally, Tinubu's election as president could eventually be nullified, however long it takes to determine the petitions, but that's theoretical. In practice, presidential election petitions in Nigeria are otios purely academic. The Supreme Court has nullified several governorship elections, but never so far a presidential election, even when it's substantially, even materially flawed. Why, might you ask? Two reasons suggest themselves. One is real politic. The spoils belong to those who have the power to take and keep what they have taken. A person invalidly elected as president would mobilize resources and the powers that be to ensure the Supreme Court doesn't snatch the power from him. Another is that the Supreme Court considers disruptions that could ensue from nullifying the invalid election of a sitting president and decides against taking that course of action. Some have described the Supreme Court as both a court of law and public policy. There is nothing unique about that. Every appellate court is a court of public policy. Lord Denning, the famous British judge, was known for adducing public policy reasons for his decisions and for creating an influential body of case law with strong public policy underpinnings. But what's public policy in the Nigerian judicial contest? Is it to safeguard democracy or to protect powerful vested interests? Is it to avoid administrative or political disruptions? likely to result from nullifying an invalid election, or to set legal principles and judicial precedent that will transform Nigerian democracy. Think about it. Politicians rig presidential elections in collusion with election officials and tell their opponents, go to court. Why? Because the court will do nothing to upset the apple court. But imagine the reverberations and future repercussions if the Supreme Court were to remove a sitting president from office on the basis that he wasn't duly elected. Hardly any politician would want to become president through invalid election, knowing he would be sitting on a ticking time bomb. But lack of consequences perpetuates impunity. Heavens won't fall if a president is removed from office due to an invalid election. Section 146, 1 of the Constitution, says that the office of president can become vacant by reason of death, resignation, impeachment, permanent incapacity, and then hard, or the removal of the president from office for any other reason. Clearly, 
that phrase for any other reason envisages the nullification of the election of a president not validly elected. And where a president and vice president are declared invalidly elected and thus asked to vacate the offices, the Senate president would, under Section 146, to hold the office of president for a maximum of three months during which a new president will be elected. But will the president whose election has been declared invalid but who presumably still controls the armed forces go quietly? Well, in that case, the question becomes where the loyalty of the armed forces lies with an illegitimate president or constitution as interpreted by the Supreme Court. I believe their loyalty will be with the constitution. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and please turn the notification bell on. Thank you. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting the Supreme Court should determine the presidential election petitions one way or another. Far from it, I'm simply responding to the argument that the Supreme Court will never nullify a presidential election on public policy grounds. I submit that the public policy considerations that really matter in presidential election cases are safeguarding Nigeria's democracy and setting legal principles and judicial precedents that will positively change democracy politics and governance in this country, but a court must first consider a case based on law, evidence and argument, and only consider public policy with respect to remedies. For instance, in the UK, a court may find in favor of a claimant and yet refuse to grant certain remedy on public policy grounds. By granting prospective declarations, albeit without relief, the court at least sets legal principles and precedent for the future. But I repeat, there are no public policy reasons for refusing to nullify a presidential election if the law, evidence, and argument justify it. If the Supreme Court decides that these fundamental process issues don't matter, well, Nigerians, especially the youth, won't trust INEC again, and without trust, Nigeria's democracy is doomed. Of course, there are other critical issues from whether a candidate must have at least one quarter of the votes cast in Abuja under Section 134 of the Constitution, to whether a person is qualified to be president if he voluntarily acquired the citizenship of another country under Section 137-1A, and whether a drug-related property for fissure amounts to any other offense imposed on him by any court or tribunal under Section 137-1D. These issues will test the independence, impartiality, and courage of the apex court and the integrity of Nigeria's electoral democracy. So, it is not a cliché. The Supreme Court is the last hope of democracy in Nigeria. It holds Nigeria's democratic future in its hands, how it interprets the Constitution and determines the presidential election petitions matters, usually. Fingers crossed. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.